Directors of the Heads Consortium, I would like to welcome you to our 2020 Best Practice Showcase, celebrating technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Victor Ray, and I will be in charge of introducing the speakers of the breaking sessions of this room. Although we will have time for questions at the end, the presenters will let you know whether you'll be able to address your questions at any time during the presentation. This presentation will be in, in English language. Simultaneous translation is available in channel one and two. Additional headphones are available at the room or the registration area. We will appreciate that you change your mobile phone to vibration or silent mode in order to have your full attention to this session. Finally, please make sure you're com you complete the evaluation form for this session and add it before you leave this room. Your feedback and recommendations are very important to heads. Now, we are ready to start. The title of this presentation is Overall Track Winners Access. Please welcome speakers, but, uh, Mrs. Laurie Austin, Mrs. Deira Pereira, and Mrs. Lisa Molanen from Lehman College of the City of the City University of New York. transform that process over um, a number of years here. We're, we're very proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish and we're happy to be able to share that with you today. We're going to talk a little bit first, very briefly, about Lehman, an overview of who we are. We're going to share with you what our transfer process was and specifically our transfer credit evaluation process. and. Then um, we have developed a new system, we call it ETCE, for electronic TCEs and our Lehman 360. We also are going to talk about some of the degree audit problems that we encountered and again how we've been able to make major improvements in that audit process so things are much more accurate now and the impact that all of this has had on students, faculty, and staff. Um, we're going to share next steps and then, of course, um, Q&A. Currently, Lehman has 15,543 total undergraduate students. 69% of those entering degree-seeking students are transfers here at Lehman. We have a very, very large transfer population. We enroll approximately 3,500 transfers annually, and we complete 5,000 or more transfer credit evaluations also each year. So we have been working very hard on making our evaluation process automated, and that has been happening over a process of probably really four, four to five years. But there are still many courses that have not yet been evaluated. So those are our unevaluated courses. And um, for those that have been evaluated, we create rules in our system so that the TCE process happens very quickly. And students are able to then get advised and, and move forward with the enrollment process. So in the past, when a course was not evaluated, we created a faculty transfer form and we would send that to students. They would physically have to take a piece of paper and they would walk around campus looking for faculty to sign these courses to come up with what the equivalent course was here at Lehman. A lot of this was going on during summer and winter or peak registration periods when faculty were not around. So there was a lot of frustration on the part of students, on the part of faculty, and um, we knew that we needed to make a major change to this process. 
Um, if a student did not have the review form signed, then they would get a hold on their record, so it would interfere with their ability to register. There was not a way of tracking how many students needed signatures or how many courses needed to be evaluated. And all of this resulted in a time lag for updating the transfer credit evaluations. So again, it was, it was very problematic. So we have now worked um, very, very closely with the IT department, our student success initiatives department, and because of a really wonderful relationship and collaborative effort, we've been able to create this electronic workflow, workflow process. Um, we have a system called CUNY First, which is PeopleSoft. We also um, use Process Maker. We have Lehman 60, and we use an electronic repository of college catalogs in order to accomplish this. And I have colleagues here that are going to talk a little bit more about this um, in a moment. Um, in the past, when certain courses were evaluated, it would be specific to students. Students would plead their case with faculty. It would not necessarily be um, something that was really equitable. So now that we have this system, it is based on the course content. There is very minimal student intervention. Um, the course only has to be evaluated once, and faculty can be evaluating this from anywhere. They can be at home, they could be on the beach, they could be in their office, so it provides a lot more flexibility. Um, a colleague is now going to show you the transfer credit evaluation process, and um, this is Elkin now who's going to take over, and he's going to show it to you live. Uh, thank you, Laurie. So, what we, we have developed here is a script, right? As Laurie said, uh, it's going to identify uh, daily which courses need to be uh, equated, right? Uh, so, it detects those courses and then automatically is going to try to find the course description and send it to the appropriate department to be evaluated. So, I'm going to show you the system. Uh, so, screen share, okay. So I need to share this one, right? Okay. Okay, so the advisor or the, the, the person responsible in each department who is going to evaluate the, uh, a transfer course, right? So it will come here to our business process management software, uh, that in this case is Process Maker, that we use it for other purposes too. Uh, for instance, they, they use it for, uh, to, uh, the students use it for, to declare the major, the faculty use it to, when they need to change uh, the grade of a student, and for other purposes. So they will come here to the system, and I will show you what they will see. I will open a, a CUNY, a CUNY uh, case. CUNY is a city a University of New York. So, since this is a, a, a CUNY institution and Lehman is also a CUNY institution, so we have that information in our PeopleSoft uh, environment. So as you can see, we grab the description. This is, this is the description, and then we ask the uh, advisor to equate that class. In this case, it is uh, electrical circuits. So they have access here to all the different subjects within that department only. So let's say that is equal to I don't know to physics, and then this is the catalog and then the number of credits, that's it. So usually it's a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between the transfer course. However, sometimes they can equate it to more than one course. And this applies most of the time in, in the science uh, uh, disciplines. 
like in chemistry when we have a, a course that is the lecture and the other one is the lab. So they can equate it up to three courses if needed. Now, uh, as I said before, this is for a CUNY institution. What is, when we have the case of a non-CUNY institution, I will show you the, the case right now, like this one. We use the services of a company called College Source. And College, College Source is a repository of catalogs of universities within the US, and some of them abroad. So when we query for the course that is coming in this case for Niagara University, we tell them, hey, can you give me the information for Math 102? They give us this image, okay? It's not text, it's an image. That is the way that they protect their uh, copyright information. So we append it to the case that we sent to the advisor, and pretty much as the previous case, they just come here and say, okay, I am going to equate Math 102 to Math uh, 105 here at Lehman. And they click Next. And this case is sent to the Office of Transfers and Evaluations where they will create a rule in PeopleSoft. So if there is another student coming from the same institution, in this case from Niagara University with math uh, uh, 102. So that course will be equated to math 105 here at Lima. Go ahead. No, uh, no. Now, in the case of international institutions, that is when we ask the student to provide information. So the student needs to go to our Lehman 360, that is the, the student portal that we use here at Lehman. It was built in-house. So they will log in with their credentials. It is also good to mention, Elkin, that this is the only time when the student need to do something, and it's pretty minimal cases. Yes. Yes, thank you for reminding that. Uh, uh, so let me let me find a student. So this is the profile of a student, uh, Matthias, and uh, Matthias will go here to e-transfer course evaluations. And he will see that all of these courses, we couldn't find it in, in college source, right? They don't have the catalog because this is an international institution. So Matthias needs to come here and provide the information. They will click here, for instance, this is an algebra course, and they have to copy and paste the description and also provide the source of that information. So most of the time they will go to the transfer institution, find any one of those web pages, copy and paste that information here. If they cannot provide that information, they have the option here to upload a document uh, that will contain that information. So we, they can append here a PDF, an image, uh, and that's it, we just accept those two formats. If still they cannot provide that information, the third and last option is that they can declare this course as an elective. And they will receive some credit that is going to be, is, is, is going to apply only to this particular student in that case, okay? So in the future, if we have another student coming from the, the same institution, and in this case, Algebra 1, and if this, that student provides that information, then it will be a general rule for, for a Lima. Now, uh, uh, Data Parada is going to continue 
with the uh, admissions administration. Yeah, thank you. So using the student interface, using the advisor's interface, I will show you now um, what the admissions office transfer evaluation unit is for the transfer evaluation course. Where am I? Okay, just go back here. Okay, right here. So the admission staff will have a list of all the students in this field who are uh, part of the evaluation process at this point. So this field here is per student. If you click on any of these icons here, you'll see how many courses per student are being evaluated or pending to be evaluated. The second view here, it's by course. So each one of these courses here will tell you how many students are being affected by the course and the course description of the course. Anything here, Elkin, that I, the adjustment, right? There's nothing. There's nothing. So they do also provide an export of reports, not only by student, but also by uh, the course, which is pretty much simple, self-explanatory. Do we come in with the student? No, no, yet. Okay. It will come. So that's pretty much it for the administration portion of it. Okay. Let's go back here. Sharing, oh, sharing this so the other thing that we've been able to accomplish, which was phase two of this, once the courses are evaluated and come back to the admissions office, we now can automatically update the student's transfer credit evaluation. And that is something that, again, we had to do manually for a very long time. So all of this, of course, helps to expedite the student's transfer credit evaluation so that they can then be ready to move on to get advisement. So here's our numbers. Since we went live, uh, we piloted the tool in October 2018 with three departments. We went full launch in March by March 2019, and since then, we have had 6,383 transfer courses evaluated from 565 different institutions within CUNY and non-CUNY, and the average turnaround time is eight days with 21 hours median turnaround time as well. 5,344 courses uh, have been batch updated in CUNY First, which is our student information system where people solve, as Lori mentioned um, in the beginning, and that has an implication of 1,310 student records being updated in CUNY First as well. Okay. So my colleague Lisa will take over from here. Lisa? Thank you, Data. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some other enhancements that were made. ETCE, which we've been describing up until now, is a brand new system that we're using, and that change has been very exciting. But I also want to talk about uh, some significant enhancements that we've made to our existing systems. I don't know how many of you in the audience are using a degree auditing tool called DegreeWorks, but that is our main advisement tool that we use here. And we saw that with our transfer population, there were some significant challenges in using that tool when we were first meeting with our new transfer students. So the initial onboarding of that student population, which is a big part of what my office oversees, was very challenging because of some deficiencies in the system. So for example, Lori mentioned earlier on that about 69% of our students are transfer students. So we have huge, huge numbers of transfer students, 
and about half of those have transferred to Lehman with an associate's degree. And for students who transferred to Lehman with an associate's degree, we found that very often the degree works audit would show an incorrect requirement set for them. And that's because our requirements are rather complicated in that the general education requirements are based on the type of institution that a student transfers from and the number of credits that a student transfers with. So if they're transferring from a community college or from a four-year college with 30 credits, with 90 credits, all of those factors impact the requirements that a student must complete. And our degree auditing system just wasn't sophisticated enough to be able to discern what type of requirements that should be attached to a student. So this was incredibly frustrating because a student would come into our advising office to be advised. We would pull up our advisement tool and more often than not, what it displayed was wrong. In addition to that, for students who were transferring to us uh, during their last semester of their associate degree or students whose courses were still in progress, those courses that were currently in progress at their former institution weren't displaying on the degree auditing tool. So if a student had completed four semesters of an institution, we would only have access to viewing three out of those four semesters. That last semester wasn't populating on our degree auditing tool. So it was really not a reliable system for us, nor was it for students. It caused a lot of frustration. You'll see in our little uh, comic here that that just demonstrates how frustrated we all were with it because basically we were trying to advise a student and telling a student, I know that your degree works audit says this, but ignore what the audit is saying and just listen to what I'm telling you. So it was not a very uh, efficient or useful way to advise our students. We've managed to overcome these challenges in the last couple of semesters. We've managed to code our associate degree holders in our student database system in such a way that the degree auditing tool could then read that code and apply the appropriate requirements set. So that's been a huge game changer for us in advisement. In addition, one of our one of our folks here on campus has found a way to treat those courses that were still in progress uh, in our system to allow them to then populate the audit. So we've managed to overcome those two very, very uh, significant challenges for us. And so now our initial advisement session with our student has become a real advisement session because what we're saying to the student actually matches what it is that they're seeing on the screen. So for all of these enhancements for ETCE and DegreeWorks, the impact has been really tremendous. On students, it's a much smoother process. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the transfer process in itself, but it's overall, in general, quite a stressful system. Um, but now with these enhancements, it's been, it's been a much smoother process. The audit is accurate, so if ever the students want to refer back to the advisement that they receive from the advisor, the information that they're seeing on their audit is, uh, is compatible with what it is that we had told them. And it makes their registration process much, much easier because in the past we had found that because the audit was incorrect and because of the transfer credit evaluation process taking so long, oftentimes students during their first semester after transfer would end up registering for courses that they had already received credit for and they would do so unknowingly. And as a result, they would sometimes lose their financial aid eligibility. So now they're registering for appropriate courses during their first semester. It's a much easier transfer process. And students don't have to go through this process over and over. Once an equivalency is set, it's set in the rules. And so it only has to be done once. From a faculty's perspective, they absolutely love these changes, in particular the ETCE process. Um, as you've seen, they receive the course description electronically, so it's very easy for them to access it. The work can be divided amongst the faculty members, it, and it can be done, as Lori had mentioned earlier, from anywhere uh, that they might be. All they need is access to a computer. It also greatly reduces the lines that they have during peak periods of advisement and registration and allows them to focus on more content in their advising rather than signing forms and doing these more menial tasks. And finally, for the staff, and I just don't just mean admission staff, it's advisement, everyone on campus, we can all access this information 
easily through our Lehman 360 application. It keeps everyone on the same page. It allows us to share information much more easily. It really reduces the amount of time that it takes us to manually update this. It's much more efficient. It allows admissions and advisement to be more efficient in its processes. Um, and one final bonus for advisement is because the, the degree works audit is much more accurate now initially. We don't have to bounce back between so many different screens when we're advising students. So overall, it's been huge, huge gains for everyone on, across campus for all of our constituencies. In terms of our next steps, Lehman has really placed a lot of emphasis on the transfer for process and we'd like to continue improving and enhancing it based on feedback that we're receiving from everyone on our campus. We're also finding that we can potentially utilize ETCE for other purposes. We're involved in some grants and in other projects that we think we can repurpose this tool to help us accomplish those goals as well. The ETC process in and of itself continues to be enhanced and improved um, based on feedback from admissions and IT and students. And it's gained so much traction, not only here locally on our campus, but within the university at large, that the university is considering expanding the system to the entire system. At this point, we'd like to turn it over to the audience to see if anyone has any questions for us. You have our names and our contact information on the screen. We're also going to share this PowerPoint presentation with you so that you could refer back to it should you, should you need to. Are there any questions that we can address? Okay. I think she's funny. Yeah, Alexa, how many uh, participants do we have attending this this presentation? Okay. Well, we'll give you another minute. If anyone has any questions, we're here. Um, otherwise, feel free to reach out to any of us. We're always happy to discuss this and share what we're doing at Lehman. Okay, so if no one has any questions, we, we want to thank HETS for all the work that you've done to help us with this process and for allowing us to bring the presentation to you from New York. Have a great conference. Good luck with the rest of it. Yes. Okay. Thank Have you. A Enjoy the rest of your conference. Right here, this little one. Bye bye. Bye.